Hey everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be making Sarah's wristlet pouch or crossbody bag. So, let's get started. Here is the wristlet pouch. It measures 8 inches wide by 6.5 inches high by 2 inches deep. It has an exterior slip pocket here, along with an exterior zippered pocket. And then if we look on the inside of the bag, you'll see that there's space for three card slots and you can actually fit more than one card in each one of those slots. It has a pretty nice size interior and then it also has an interior zippered pocket. And then here's a view of the back of the pouch. Now I have here the crossbody bag and as I said this is the actual bag that we will be making in the video. It's approximately nine and a half inches wide by seven and a quarter inches high by two and a half inches deep. It has the same exterior slip pocket along with the exterior zippered pocket. Inside you have a nice roomy interior it has the same three card slots on the inside as well as the interior zippered pocket. And again, here is a view from the back of the pouch. Now, you will need a tassel or some sort of charm to hang from your zipper pull to help you easily open up this exterior zipper pocket. If you would like to sew along with me, I do have a pattern available to make either of the bags. I will put a link in the description below the video to where you can find the pattern. The bag comes in two different sizes. You can either make it as a wristlet pouch or a crossbody bag. All the pattern pieces and everything that you need to know to make either bag is contained within this PDF pattern. Now in the video here, I will be making the crossbody size but the directions are exactly the same for both bags. There are just a few small exceptions in the directions and I do point those out in both the video tutorial and the PDF pattern. In the PDF pattern, if you look at the first page, I give you some general instructions. This project is best suited for cork fabric or faux leather and I do use 100% cotton quilting fabric for the interior and I use Woven Fuse to, to interface the interior fabric. When you print out your pattern, you always want to print it out at 100% or actual size. Then you'll see some test squares on the pattern pieces themselves, and you want to measure those test squares from side to side and top to bottom. They need to measure two inches in each direction, and that will ensure you that your pattern has printed out to the correct size. And you want to measure from the outside lines. When you cut out your pattern, you want to make sure that you cut out all the pieces on the outer black lines. You don't want to cut off your black lines or cut in the middle of them. You want to cut right on the outside edge of that line. And all of the seam allowances are one quarter of an inch unless I specify otherwise. Now I do list all the materials that you need for either the wristlet pouch or the crossbody bag, along with notions and hardware. Now, the measurements that I give you are not really standard measurements. Because as bag makers we buy our materials in all different widths, I've just given some samples of how much fabric that you would need of each. And just to give you an idea, I base the fabric measurements on purchasing a piece of cork fabric that's 18 inches wide by 27 inches high, and that seems to be a pretty standard measurement for the way cork fabric is sold over some of the different distributors. You will find all of the pattern pieces needed to make either bag at the back of this PDF file. And in addition to cutting out all of your pattern pieces, you will also need to cut out some additional pieces and I have all of those listed here. Then I have some information about how you need to prepare your zippers and this is one example of where there will be some difference in the measurements for both the wristlet pouch and the crossbody bag. So you want to read this section here. And then I just give some other general information about the pattern on this page. Now in addition to this video tutorial, which will give you the instructions for creating either bag, 
I also have 14 pages of step-by-step -step instructions within the PDF pattern itself. It really does go step-by-step -step, and there are about 14 pages of instructions here. And you'll take each step at a time and you'll see right underneath, right here where it says step one, it says click here to watch the video tutorial for step one. So from within the PDF pattern itself, you will be able to click on this link and it'll take you directly to the section in this video that you need to view. And you'll see this link for every single section in the tutorial. And you will see up here in the upper right hand corner, I do have all the pages numbered for the tutorial so that you can print that out separately and keep all of your pages in order. And they go pages number 1 through 14. Then following the printed instructions, you're going to see your layout charts and your pattern pieces. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to make the crossbody bag. For the exterior, I'm using cork fabric. The blue is my main fabric and the tan is my contrast fabric. Then for the lining, I'm using 100% cotton quilting fabric and each one of these pieces has been interfaced with woven fuse too. So the pieces that I have here and here have been cut out from the pattern pieces at the back of your PDF file. In addition to cutting out those pattern pieces, you will need to cut out some additional pieces and you can find the measurements for those within the PDF file itself. So from the contrast, I've cut out two top bands and then from the main fabric, I've cut out two D-ring tabs, a zipper tab and my crossbody strap. From the cotton quilting fabric, I've cut out two pieces for the top bands and each one of these pieces do need to be interfaced with the woven fuse too. Then you need your number five zipper tape, which I have right here, along with three zipper pulls. Now I will be putting a tassel on the front exterior pocket and that tassel also serves as a zipper pull. So that is included in one of my three zipper pulls. Then you'll need two one inch swivel clips along with two one inch D-rings. And I have some rivets here, which are optional to be used on the crossbody strap. I have some additional items here that you'll need for making your project. You will need a gridded ruler along with a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. I will be using some double-sided adhesive tape in the project and you do need to use a marking tool. Now I will be using a friction pen in the video for demonstration purposes only. I normally don't use this on a project that I'm making for myself or for sale. The reason why is because while the ink from these pens will disappear with heat, they do come back with cold. When I'm not making a video, I actually prefer to use a chalk wheel. I've had this one for a very long time. The design has changed, but these are made by Clover. And these sew line marking pencils are also very nice. This one has three different colors in it, and it also has an eraser built in for erasing the marks. It's also helpful to have a stiletto tool. I will be using Wonder Clips. You do not want to use pins in your faux leather or your cork fabric. For my thread, I'm going to be using my favorite thread, which is the Gudeman Mara 70 thread. And I like to use a size 16 sewing machine needle for this thread. Here I've prepared the three zippers that I need to make the crossbody bag. If you look in your PDF pattern under the zipper preparation section, you will see the measurements that you need to cut each one of these zippers for the crossbody bag and for the wristlet pouch. So all I've done was taken my zipper tape, I've added on the three zipper pulls, and then I cut the tape to the proper length, and then I stitched each end of the zippers so that my zipper pull does not come off accidentally. This is step one in the pattern instructions, which is sewing the exterior pocket facing to the exterior front. So I have my exterior front here and this is the pocket facing. You want to take the two pieces and put them right sides together and you want to match up the opening around this U shape. I'm going to clip it in place with some wonder clips and I want to make sure that all of my edges are even. Once it's clipped into place we're going to sew around this U-shaped opening with a one quarter inch seam. I am sewing on a Juki DDL 8000A with a stitch length of 2.5 and a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch and you do want to back stitch at both ends.
So you can pivot and then sew across the front. And pivot one more time and then sew up the side. Next I'll clip into each corner here. You want to make sure that you don't clip through your stitching. So just do a little diagonal cut on each side. Up to but not through your stitching. And then in addition to making those clips, I like to clip in towards that diagonal cut just to make a little bit of a V shape there. And what that's going to do is eliminate the bulk in those corners. So do that on both sides. After you have your clips done, you're going to turn the exterior pocket facing to the opposite side of the exterior front so that the pieces are wrong sides together. You want to make sure that your seam is laying right on top here. And now with everything clipped into place, we're going to go ahead and top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge of that opening. I'm going to top stitch with a stitch length of 3.5 one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the opening. And you do want to back stitch at both ends. This is step two, part A in the instructions, which is sewing the exterior zipper pocket together. What you'll need are the two exterior zipper pocket fronts and the zipper that was prepared for this pocket. We want to place the two exterior zipper pocket fronts right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between. So I'm going to take the zipper and I'm going to place the right side of the zipper onto the right side of one of the pockets. Now the right side of the zipper is always the side that has a zipper pull. So I do like to clip them one at a time. And then once you have the zipper clipped into place, you're going to take the second pocket piece and you're going to line it up the top edge of the zipper tape you also want to make sure that your bottom and your side edges are all even with each other. And you'll be clipping these together with the zipper sandwiched in between. After clipping it all into place with your side and your bottom edges even, we want to sew across the top with a 1 quarter inch seam. Now I'm sewing across the top with a stitch length of 3.0. Back stitch at both ends and make sure that your top edges and your zipper edge are all even with each other. Place the two exterior zipper pocket fronts wrong sides together, just like this. And I like to put a few clips to hold the sides and the bottoms together for me. Make sure that all of those edges are nice and even. 
Once you have the sides and bottoms clipped together, we're going to top stitch 1 8 of an inch away from this edge here. As I do this at the sewing machine, what I like to do is pull this section here, the zipper pocket section, and the zipper at the same time. That helps this seam to lie flat so that you'll get a nice line of top stitching. I'm top stitching 1 8 of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.5 and do back stitch at both ends. This is step two, part B, sewing the exterior pocket. You'll need the exterior zipper pocket back and the exterior zipper pocket front that you just created. You're going to take the zipper pocket front with the zipper and place it right on top of the exterior zipper pocket back. Now when you do this, you want the top edge of your zipper to be even with the top edge of the zipper pocket back. So it's important for those edges to be even and you want your sides and bottom edges to be even as well. And then you're going to clip all of those layers together. After everything's clipped together, you're going to open your zipper about halfway and you're going to baste around the sides, the bottom, and across the top of the zipper. When you sew, you will be sewing through the two exterior zipper pocket fronts and the zipper pocket back at the same time. I'm going to start the basting with a stitch length of 4.0. We're just basting 1 8 of an inch away from this edge here. Now, you never want to sew over a metal zipper. This is not a metal zipper. It is a nylon zipper, and my machine will sew over it. If you have any worries about your machine sewing over a zipper of any type, no matter what it's made of, you can always hand crank that machine over. And to hand crank, you'll just be turning your hand wheel towards you as you go over the zipper. It's not necessary to backstitch at this time. And this is where you might want to use a stiletto. I don't want this zipper to separate, so I'm just going to make sure that the top edge is lined up and I'm going to hold it in place with the stiletto. After basting, you can go ahead and clip these zippers even with the sides of the zipper pocket. This is step three, sewing the exterior zipper pocket to the exterior front. So you're going to need your exterior front that you completed in step one, and then you'll need the exterior zipper pocket that you just completed in step two, part B. We're going to take these pieces, the exterior front, and turn it so that it's wrong side up. Then you'll take the zipper pocket and you also want to place that wrong side up. And you'll have the right side of the zipper pocket facing the right side of this front facing right here. And you want to clip these layers together. So we're clipping this pocket section to the front facing. When you do, you want to make sure that this top edge is even with the top edge of the exterior front. So I like to take it like this, and I match up the edges, so I'm only clipping to the front facing right now. 
I'm clipping the pocket to the front facing. I'm going to clip all around the sides and the bottom. Once you have everything all clipped into place, we'll turn this over this way and you want this on the bed of the machine just like this with the right sides facing up. You're going to push aside your exterior front and we're going to sew a seam all around here one quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now when you do it, you're only going to be sewing through the facing and your zipper pocket. I am sewing one quarter of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.0. Here is our zipper pocket sewn to the facing and we did not stitch across the top. This will get stitched when we put on the top bands. This is step four, part A, sewing the exterior top bands to the exterior front and back. So you're going to need the two exterior top bands right here. Then you need your exterior front and then you also need the exterior back piece. We'll start with the exterior back. You're going to take one of the exterior bands and place it right sides together with the top band on the top edge of the exterior back. You want to make sure that all of these edges are nice and even on the sides and on the top. And then you'll clip it all the way across and once you have it clipped in place we're going to sew it with a one quarter of an inch seam. Then you're going to take your exterior front and do exactly the same thing. You want to clip it to the edges first, the side edges, making sure that everything is even. Make sure the edge of the top band is even with the top front. And then once you have this clipped into place, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sew it across the top here with a one quarter inch seam. I'm going to start by sewing the exterior top band to the exterior front and I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 with a 1 quarter inch seam and do back stitch at both ends. When you get to where your zipper pull is, just pull it out of the way and then continue to the end. Then you can go ahead and sew the top band to the exterior back in exactly the same way. I have the top bands sewn to both the front and back exterior. 
And the next thing that you'll do is take each one, you're going to do this to both the front and the back, push the band up towards the top of the bag. You want this seam to also be facing towards the top of the bag. Once you have it pushed up, you'll go over to the sewing machine and you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from that seam. I'm top stitching with a stitch length of 3.0, one eighth of an inch away from this edge. As you're sewing, you want to just pull both the exterior back and the top band away from each other so that this seam is nice and flat. And you do want to back stitch at both ends. Then you can go ahead and top stitch the exterior front in exactly the same way. And here's a view of the front and back exterior with the top band all top stitched into place. This is step four, part B, adding the D-ring tabs to the exterior back of the crossbody bag. Now, if you're making the wristlet pouch, you're going to skip this step. You will not be putting the D-rings on the wristlet pouch unless you want to make the wristlet pouch in a size that's a little bit smaller that you do want to use it as a crossbody. It's totally up to you. Now, in the pattern directions, I do say to cut out the D-rings from the same contrast fabric, but I decided on this one, I wanted to use the main cork fabric. But again, that's up to you. These are all personal preferences and choice, and you can do this up however you like. You're going to take the two D-ring tabs and turn them so that they're wrong sides facing up, and you want to mark a line down the center of each one, and you're doing this along the long side. This is the two and a half inch side. This right here is the two inch side. And you're going to mark in one inch from each edge. And I am using my little chalk wheel for this. I really love this little chalk wheel. Once you have those marks on there, you're going to take some double-sided tape, some double-sided adhesive tape. This is one half inch wide and you're going to stick it right over the line that you just marked. Now people will ask me what brand I use. This actually is meant for paper crafting and it's what I have on hand so it's what I use. I actually don't recommend this if for fabric. You want to get a tape that is made for fabric. After you have the tape on you're going to pull the paper off from the top side here to expose the adhesive and you should still be able to see the mark that you drew. You're going to take the long edge here and fold it in so that the edge is right on that line that you drew. Secure it down and then do the same thing on the other side. And then you'll do the same exact thing to this one here. After you've done folding in those edges towards the center, you can turn it to this side here so this side does not have that seam in the middle and you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from each long edge. I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.5 and I am going to back stitch at both ends. And then I'll just go ahead and slip the other one in here. And then you can flip them over and top stitch along the other edge. Once you're done top stitching your D-ring tabs, you can go ahead and fold them in half, just like this. You want these raw edges to be together. Slip on the D-rings. And then you just want to go ahead and baste along the bottom here. and then do the same exact thing to the other tab. Once you're done preparing the D-ring tabs, you're going to clip them to the exterior back. You want to clip in one and a half inches from the edge. So the outer edge of the D-ring will be right at that one and a half inch mark.
Once you have them clipped into place, you'll go ahead and baste each tab onto the exterior back, and I'm actually going to go do that off camera. This is step five, sewing the darts on the exterior front and back. Now, you can choose to do all of your darts at the same time, because you are going to be sewing darts into the interior lining pieces. If you want to do them all at once, that's fine. Sometimes it can be easier to sew in your main compartment zipper if the darts are not sewn into place first. But that's up to you. I'm going to do them now. Now to sew in the darts, you want to take the two long edges of this V-shape and bring them together. You need them to be even with each other and you also need this edge right here to be even. And you put in a couple of clips and then you're going to go ahead and take your ruler and you want to draw a line one quarter of an inch away from that edge. So I'll use my chalk wheel to do that. And this will be your sewing line. You're going to sew right on top of that line and you'll back stitch at both ends. So you want to prepare all four darts in exactly the same way and then we'll go ahead and sew them. I'm sewing the first dart in place with a stitch length of 3.0 and you do want to back stitch. You're going to sew right off that edge and back stitch. Then you'll sew the other three darts exactly the same way. This is step six, sewing the interior pocket card slots. You're going to need the interior pocket panel, which is right here, plus the interior pocket facing. You will also need one of the interior zipper pocket front pieces. You have two of these, you only need one for now. The first thing that you're going to do is take the facing and sew it to the interior pocket panel exactly the way that you did in step one. So you'll clip it together and then you're going to sew with a one quarter of an inch seam all around these three sides. I'm sewing the interior pocket panel to the interior pocket facing with a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch and a stitch length of 2.5. And again, you want to back stitch at both ends. pivot and then sew across the front. After sewing that seam, you're going to go ahead and clip in on these corners again, making a diagonal cut just like you did before. And then I still like to make that little V-shape after making that diagonal cut. You'll do this to both sides. After making those diagonal cuts, you're going to press the seams open and then you're going to turn the facing so that the wrong side of the facing is against the wrong side of the interior pocket panel. After turning the facing to the wrong side and pressing everything in place, I went ahead and top stitched one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the opening and I did use a stitch length of 2.5. Now we need to mark some lines for our card slots so the first thing that you want to do is find the center of this opening right here and the easiest way to do it is just fold it perfectly in half and then just make a little mark where the center is. So I have my center mark right here and then you want to take a ruler and you're going to mark one and an eighth inches from each side of that center. So I'll just line my ruler up and you want it to be even along the bottom here so that your line is straight and you're going to mark down two and a half inches. So that's one mark. Now I'll do the same thing. I'm going to mark one and an eighth inches away from that center mark, making sure that this bottom is all lined up evenly with the mark on my ruler. And then I'm going to 
draw a line two and a half inches down from the top. These two lines should be spaced two and one quarter inches apart. Now if you're making the wristlet pouch, you're going to make these measurements exactly the same. Even though this is larger, the measurements for marking your lines and the length of the lines is going to be exactly the same. Now you're going to turn this piece over and I'm going to orient it this way. And you want to mark a line three quarters of an inch down from each top edge here. Then you'll take one of the interior zipper pocket front pieces and you're going to place it right sides together on the facing. You want this top edge to be in line with the three quarter inch marks. So you line all that up and then you're going to pin this pocket or clip this pocket all the way around just like you did for the exterior front. Once you have these pieces clipped into place, you'll turn this over and put it on the bed of the machine just like this. You're going to sew down on these lines. You want to make sure that you secure the tops and the bottom of the lines of stitching really well. The clips are right now only to temporarily hold the pieces in place. We will not be sewing any seams through these pieces at this time. I'm stitching down on those lines with a stitch length of 2.5 and I'm going to secure both ends really well. Then you can go ahead and slide over and stitch the other line. Looking from the wrong side, once you've done stitching down these lines, they should stop approximately 5 eighths of an inch to 1 half of an inch up from this bottom edge. This is step 7, part A, sewing the interior zipper pocket. So what you're going to need is the interior pocket panel that you just completed in step 6, and you're going to need the second interior zipper pocket front. You'll also need the zipper that you prepared for the interior zippered pocket. Take your zipper, and you want to clip the right side of the zipper to the right side of that pocket piece with the zipper pull on the left side. So clip it and make sure that you have the top of the zipper edge and the top of the pocket even with each other. After the zipper is clipped into place, you're going to take the second interior zipper pocket front and that's going to get clipped to the opposite side of the zipper here. You want this edge right here to be even with the edge of the other pocket piece. So side edge is even and top edge is even. Once you have the two interior zipper pocket fronts clipped with the zipper in between, you're going to go ahead and stitch one quarter of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to be stitching with a stitch length of 2.5 and I'm going to back stitch at both ends. Now you want to take the two interior zipper pocket fronts and place them so that they're wrong sides together. And again, I do like to clip them temporarily in place. And then you're going to 
press this seam right here. You want to press this seam down really well from both sides. And then when you're done pressing, you're going to go ahead and top stitch one eighth of an inch away from this edge. And I'm going to do all of that off camera. I completed my top stitching with a stitch length of 3.0. Now you want to take your zipper pull and pull it halfway into the pocket area. And then you can go ahead and clip the top edges of the interior front panel to the top of the zipper. This is step 7, part B. You're going to need the interior zipper pocket front that you just completed in step 7, part A, and you're going to need the interior zipper pocket back. So we'll turn this over and we're going to take the back and put it right sides together with the pocket section here. You want the, this top edge to be aligned with the top edge of the zipper and you want all your sides and bottom edges even with each other. And you're basically going to clip this exactly the same way that you did for the exterior. I have everything clipped into place. And it's very important that the top edge of this back interior pocket is even with the top edge of your zipper right here. Now your sides and bottom edges should all be even as well. If they're not perfectly even, it's not a big deal as long as they're not off by a lot. There are a lot of factors that go into how pieces in any pattern fit together. When you trace your pattern, if you're slightly off, that makes a difference. If when you're cutting, you're slightly off, that will make a difference. And if your seams are not perfect, so in this case, this is a one quarter inch seam, if that wasn't sewn to a true one quarter inch, that will put things off. And that's usually the biggest reason why pattern pieces don't fit together properly. So no one is perfect, you can't do everything perfectly, but you always do the best that you can. Now, we're going to push the interior front out of the way again, and we're going to sew all the way around the three sides with a one quarter inch seam. We will not be sewing across the zipper yet, and you want to make sure that your zipper pull is pulled into this area here. Now I will be sewing with a stitch length of 2.5, and I am going to back stitch at both ends. Now that we finish the seam, you can go ahead and trim off the ends of those zippers. This is step eight, which is sewing the interior top bands to the interior panels. So you'll need your interior front panel, the interior back panel, and your two top bands. Now this is going to be done exactly the way that you did for the exterior in step four. You'll take each band, clip it to the sides first, and then you'll clip all along the length. We'll be sewing this with a one quarter of an inch seam all the way across the top. And then when you're done, you'll fold up the bands just the way you did in step four, and then you'll top stitch. So here's this one pinned, and now I'll pin the other panel. Now I did use the same fabric for both the panel and my top band, but you obviously can use a contrasting fabric, which looks really nice on the interior. I didn't do it for this one, but that's one nice thing about having a top band on the interior. You can really make it however you like. Now I have both top bands clipped into place and I'm going to go ahead and sew them with a one quarter inch seam. Then I'll push the top bands up and do the top stitching. 
and I will go to all of that off camera because it's the exact same procedure that we followed for the exterior panels. I will be doing my um, seams with a stitch length of 2.5 and I will top stitch with a stitch length of 3.0. I have the top bands sewn on and top stitch on both the front and back interior. Now you can move on to step 9 which is sewing the darts on the interior panels. You'll do those exactly the way that you did in step 5. And again, if you prefer to sew all of your darts at the same time, I suggest that you do it after step 10. This is step 10, sewing in the zipper for the main compartment. You'll need your zipper tab. In the instructions, I say to cut out the zipper tab from the contrasting fabric, but I opted to use my main fabric for the zipper tab. You'll need to get your zipper that you cut to size for the main compartment zipper. You'll need the two exterior pieces that you've already created, along with the two interior pieces. We're going to start with the zipper and we want to start with a clean end. Now I know that I did say to stitch the ends here, but that was just so that the zipper pull doesn't pull off accidentally. So we're just going to trim a clean end there. Then you're going to take your zipper tab and place it right sides together with the zipper and put a couple of clips in to hold it in place. Then you want to sew across the zipper tab here with a 3 8 inch seam and I'm going to do that off camera using a stitch length 3.0. I've sewn on that zipper tab so I can take off my clips and I'm going to take the tab and pull it up in this direction and then I want to fold it over to the back side of the zipper so it looks just like this. And then I'll once again put some clips to hold it in place and then I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm just going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from this edge right here. And again, I'm going to do that off camera. I did my top stitching. I used a stitch length of 3.0 and I did back stitch at both ends. So now we'll take off these clips and you have some excess cork fabric here. You just want to trim away the fabric close to the seam. So now it should look just like this. Now you're going to take your exterior front and turn it with the wrong sides up and you want to mark in three quarters of an inch from each edge. And you're going to do that right on top of the top band there. So three quarters of an inch on each side. After you make these marks, you're going to take your ruler and measure the distance between these two marks. For the crossbody bag, it should be approximately 11 inches. For the wristlet pouch, it should be approximately 9 inches. Now you'll take your zipper and you want to measure up from the bottom of the zipper tab and you're going to use the measurement that you got between your two marks. So for me it was 11 inches. So I've marked 11 inches up from the bottom of the zipper tab. Now if you remember, we did sew the end of the zipper closed and that was just so that the zipper pull did not inadvertently fall off. But we don't need that stitching anymore, so I've clipped off that stitching. And I'm going to pull the zipper pull down below the marks that we just made. Now you're going to take the zipper and you want to fold back where you made that mark. So you're going to fold the zipper back on itself. So now the wrong sides of the zipper are together. And then you're going to take the top end of the zipper tape and bring it up at a 45 degree angle to that fold, just like this. And you want that fold to be sitting right below the zipper teeth and then you can hold it in place temporarily with a clip. 
Then you'll do the same exact thing to this side. Fold back on that line, bring the end of the zipper tape up at a 45 degree angle with the fold right below the zipper teeth and then hold it in place with a clip. Then you'll just want to check by closing the zipper here to make sure that these two tail ends are even with each other. After doing that, I like to go over to my sewing machine and just put in a few stitches on each side to hold everything in place. If you don't want to do that by machine, you can certainly hand stitch it. And I'm going to go do that off camera. Now we have the tails stitched into place and they're nice and even at the top. Now you want to take your exterior front with the zippered pocket and your zipper and we're going to put the zipper and the top band right sides together. You want your zipper to lay within the marks that we created on the top band. And the zipper needs to be on the left side when it's closed. When I clip this I actually like to do it from this side so that I can see the marks. So I'm just going to line everything up and put in some clips. And then you'll clip all along the length here. And then after the zipper is clipped in on this side, you're going to go ahead and take one of your interior pieces, but it needs to be the one without the zippered pocket on it. And then you're going to clip that to the exterior front with the zipper sandwiched in between. After everything is clipped into place, we're going to sew straight across with a one quarter of an inch seam. And you want to start with your zipper pull in towards the body of the bag a little bit. I'm going to be sewing with a one quarter of an inch seam and a stitch length of 3.0. You want to make sure that all the top edges are even, the top of the zipper is even with the top edge of the interior and the exterior, and you want all of your side edges to be even as well. And do back stitch at both ends. Now I'm right at my zipper pull right here, so I'm just going to pull it past the presser foot. and then I'll continue sewing across. Now that that seam is sewn, we're going to go ahead and flip everything back like this. And then you want to take the exterior back and that's going to get clipped along this side of the zipper here. Make sure that these edges are even when you do this. So clip it exactly the way you did when you clipped on the exterior front and then you're going to clip the lining to the other side of the zipper with the zipper sandwiched in between. Now that I have the exterior back clipped into place I can turn it over and then I'm going to take the interior piece that has a zipper pocket and that's going to get clipped to this side of the zipper. Again always make sure that all of the edges are even, the side edges and the top edges.
Once again, now that this is clipped into place, we're going to sew straight across with a one quarter inch seam. My zipper pull is right around here and I'll be starting at this end. So as I get towards the zipper pull, I'm going to want to pull that once again past the presser foot. I am sewing again with a one quarter inch seam and a stitch length of 3.0 and I will back stitch at both ends. Try and make sure that all of those edges are staying nice and even at the top. Now that I'm getting towards the end where the zipper pull is, I'm going to pull it past the presser foot. And then I can sew off to the end. Now for the area where the D-ring tabs are, if you want to go and reinforce that with a few rows of stitching, that's fine too. After the interiors and the exteriors are sewn to both sides of the zipper, you can go ahead and trim off that excess zipper tape. And then you want to go ahead and open this up so that the exterior sides are opposite each other and the interior sides are opposite each other. And then you want to go ahead and press that interior away from the zipper on both sides. When you're pressing the interior away from the zipper, you're only pressing from the side of the cotton quilting fabric. You never want to iron on top of your cork or your faux vinyl. The other thing is, when you do the pressing, you want this seam to be open here. So open it up and then just press down on the side of the 100% cotton quilting fabric just to keep that seam open. Just like this. Now we're going to do a little bit of top stitching. We don't want to top stitch in the area where the zipper ends and the top panel ends. So this area needs to stay free of top stitching and we don't want to top stitch in the area where the zipper tab ends and the end of the top panel here, so this area needs to stay free of top stitching. We'll begin our top stitching right here where this zipper ends. We're going to top stitch 1 8 of an inch away from the edge all along the length here. When we get to the zipper tab, we'll pivot and sew across the zipper tab, and then we'll go to the other side and top stitch along this long edge and then we're going to stop right where the zipper ends over here. I'm starting the top stitching. I will be top stitching 1 8 of an inch away from the edge with a stitch length of 3.5. Now when you top stitch you want to actually pull the interior and the exterior away from the zipper so that you get a nice flat seam up here. And you do want to back stitch And then as you move along, go ahead and pull the interior and the exterior away from the zipper. Thank you. 
I'm going to pivot and I'm going to sew across that zipper tab. And I'll pivot again and go up the other side. Again, I'm pulling both the interior and the exterior away from the zipper. And I'm going to stop where the zipper ends and backstitch. This is step 11, sewing the bag closed. Now that the top stitching is done, we can actually start sewing the bag closed. So you want to bring the exterior sides together and you want to bring your lining sides together. And we're going to make sure that our zipper is open so you can open it about halfway or so. And then we're going to start clipping everything together. You want to start at this side seam right here. You want to open up those seams and you want to clip them together with the seam open. And you want to make sure that it's matching right on the edge of that seam. Then where the top bands are, you want those seams to be even with each other. And the same thing on the exterior side. Then I go ahead and I do the same thing on this side. I open this seam up just like this on both sides and then I clip them together with the seams open. And then I make sure that the seam for the top band is even on both the exterior and the lining. Once you have the sides clipped into place, we can start clipping around the bag. You will be leaving an opening in between the darts down here in the interior. So I like to move it this way and you want to have the dart seams, one going this way and then one going that way so they're opposing. And then you'll lock them into each other and put a clip in. You can do that on both sides. So I'll have this one facing this way and this one is going to face that way and then I just lock them together and put a clip in. And then from there you can just start clipping all the way around. And then on this side I want to do the same thing. I'm going to have this start seam facing this way and this one facing this way. Lock them together and clip in place. And same thing here. This one will face this way, this one will face that way, and then we just lock them in place. And clip. And now we can finish clipping all the way around. After you have everything clipped, we can start sewing around with a one quarter of an inch seam. I like to start a little bit before the dart. I'll sew completely around here and then I'll stop a little bit after the dart and I'll have this section left open. I'm sewing with a 1 quarter inch seam and a stitch length of 3.0 and you do want to back stitch.
Now that we're done sewing around the bag, we can go ahead and start turning it right side out. You want to reach in and smooth out that interior lining. I like to take a point turner. This is my favorite one. It's made by Clover. And I'm just going to reach in with the point turner and I want to push out all of these rounded corners here. And you want to make sure that this is laying all nice and flat here. And then for the opposite side where you have the zipper tab, I like to take my point turner and get right underneath that tab and push it up. And for this section right here, this side end, you can just push that out with the point turner. You can also reach in from underneath the lining inside and push that seam up with your point turner. You just don't want to push it too hard because you don't want to poke through your seams. So you can work it so that it comes up nice and square. And then I just really take a lot of time to smooth everything out in, inside and I will work my corners quite a bit with the point turn until I get them looking exactly how I want them to look. Once you have everything laying nice and flat, you can go ahead and pull the lining out and close up your opening. Now you'll want to take the raw edges of the opening, press them under one quarter of an inch, and then you can clip them in place. You can either sew this by machine or hand stitch it closed, and I prefer hand stitching. So I'm going to go hand stitch this closed off camera. Hand stitching will give you a nicer finish on the inside of the bag. And here's what the interior looks like after I've hand stitched it closed. So now I can just push it back into the bag and smooth it all out. This is step 12, which is to make either the crossbody strap or the wristlet strap. Now to get the length that I needed for my crossbody strap, I did have to sew two pieces of cork together to get the proper length. The width is four inches. I sewed it together on the diagonal and then I top stitched on each side of the seam line. Now we want to open this up and we're going to chalk a line directly down the center of the strap. So for me that's going to be two inches in and I'll do this all along the length. After marking the center I'm going to put a piece of double sided adhesive tape right on top of that line just like we did before when we made the D-ring tabs. And then after adhering that tape I'm going to pull the paper off of the top side to expose the adhesive. And then I'm going to start folding the long edges in towards that center line. And this is exactly what we did for the D-ring tabs, only we're using a much longer piece of cork fabric here. You'll do this all along the length, and once you have this side adhered to the tape, you'll go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. Now that I have this side stuck down, I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side, all along the length. After both sides are adhered towards the center, I'm going to take the entire piece and fold it in half and clip it in place. Now that I have the entire length clipped into place, I'm just going to top stitch along each long edge. I am going to do that off camera and I will use a stitch length of 3.5 and do back stitch at each end. Here's my crossbody strap with all the top stitching done. 
Now the way I like to finish my ends is to use some hardware that's designed to go on the end of the strap. I don't have any on hand right now, but I'm going to put on my swivel clip. I'll put one on each end. I'll fold the end up a couple of inches and I like to secure it together with a couple of rivets. If you don't want to use rivets, you certainly can just sew across the strap right here and you'll want to secure it with a few rows of stitching. But I am going to go ahead and secure mine with rivets. Now we can work on making the wristlet strap. You'll need the piece of fabric that you cut for the strap a one inch swivel clip and I have two rivets here which are optional. We'll start by drawing a line straight down the center of the strap and you want to make this line all along the length of the strap. Then you'll take a piece of the double-sided adhesive tape and put a row of adhesive tape on top of the line that you just marked. And this time you want to stop about an inch before the ends. Then pull the paper off of the top of the tape to expose the adhesive. And then we're going to go ahead and fold each long edge up to that center line and adhere it down to the adhesive. When you're done folding this side towards the center, just flip it over and do the same exact thing on this side. Fold the long edge towards the center and adhere it down on the top of the tape. After you have the two long edges adhered to the center line, you're going to take the strap and fold it in half and then you want to take your swivel clip and slip that onto the end of the wristlet strap. Then you're going to fold it over this way. You'll open up the ends of the strap and then you want to clip the two short ends together. After you've clipped those two short edges together, you want to go ahead and sew a seam that's about one quarter to one half inch away from the edge. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll use a stitch length of 3.0. Now go ahead and open up that seam. And then you want to fold those edges towards the middle again, just like this. And then you want to re-stick these edges where they pulled up for us to make the seam. Do that on both sides. Make sure that everything is still adhered to the center. And then we're going to fold the strap in half the same way that we did for the crossbody and clip it together. You'll do this all along the length. And you can move that clip out of the way as you go. After you have your folded edges clipped together, we're going to go ahead and do some top stitching. You want your swivel clip to be on the outside of the ring. The strap will go down on the bed of the machine like this and then you're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from each side and you'll push this clip out of the way as you need to. I'm going to start my top stitching one eighth of an inch away from the edge and a stitch length of 3.5. My swivel clip is here towards the outer ring of the wristlet and I am going to start on the side where the double fold is and I'm also starting where the seam is. You do want to back stitch.
And now you can scoot over and go ahead and top stitch on the opposite side. You'll do this exactly the same way. Now you need to secure everything in place. And you have two options. You can either sew across the strap. If you do that, I like to do it right in the ditch. Or you can put in some rivets, which is my preferred way. And I'm going to put a rivet both below and above the seam here. And that will hold my swivel clip in place and it will hold the strap together. And here's the completed strap with the rivet set in place. And here is our crossbody bag completed with the strap attached. And then of course we have the wristlet pouch here. I do hope that you've enjoyed watching this video tutorial. I really enjoyed designing this pouch. It's gone through a lot of iterations and a lot of tweaking as I wanted to get everything just right. And I want to thank everyone who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as one. So please like and subscribe.